Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Adam Intrator. I'm going to give a brief introduction today to something called functional reactive programming. Um, I will also introduce the concept of event streams and how the event stream can be represented by an object called the observable. Uh, and finally, I will um, introduce a way to uh, a tool that we can use to incorporate this into a workflow that we're familiar with, that of React Redux. It's a lot to cover in 10 minutes, but and I probably won't do justice to the topic, but I'll do my best. So what is functional reactive programming? Um, so nobody has really given a clear-cut answer to this, and there's kind of different people have different definitions. Um, for our purpose, we're going to say that it is uh, programming with um, uh, event streams um, and with uh, asynchronous, um, yeah, with asynchronous data streams, and these are called event streams. Um, and the way that it is defined today, uh, the term functional reactive programming, it's actually been disputed by the authors of the original paper that described uh, what's called functional reactive animation, which is where the whole concept of functional reactive programming came from. So um, in JavaScript, there are several uh, libraries that are available. Um, oh, first, uh, uh, so there is reactive prog programming, and then there is functional reactive programming. The functional part is almost an, an appendage, but it does add all the benefits of uh, functional programming in that it uh, avoids side effects and uh, gives you a host of methods and a toolbox uh, with familiar methods such as filter and map, etc. cetera. Um, so here are some of the libraries that are available in JavaScript. There's RxJS, which is going to be, we're going to focus on today. There's BaconJS, and there's CycleJS, and there are probably others out there. RxJS was, uh, is part of like this ecosystem called ReactiveX, and it's uh, kind of cross-platform. So it's a, it's a good way, I think, to kind of uh, get into the world of uh, functional reactive programming, even though the original authors would not call it re functional reactive programming. So um, as I said, functional reactive programming centers around the event stream. And what is an event stream? Um, the event stream is a sequence of events ordered in time. And you, you can almost think of the event stream as an array with an at the added dimension of time. So you're getting values at different points in time. Um, so here, for instance, so this is what's called a marble diagram. Each one of these circles is an event. Uh, the axis there is time. And so over time, you get different events. Um, uh, the same stream, and each marble is emitted. Um, and a stream can emit a value. A stream can emit uh, an error signal, and finally, a uh, complete signal. Here is uh, so the part of the toolbox that's available. Um, so these event streams, uh, which, um, as I said, are kind of like arrays, uh, you can do use many of the methods that you use for arrays on them. So you can take a stream, you can uh, use map on it, you can filter it. Uh, you can join it. And so it's kind of like this abstraction that uh, allows you to work with asynchronous data streams uh, much more easily. So here's a very basic example. Um, a, one thing I, I didn't mention is that a, a, um, an, an event stream can be anything. It can be a series of uh, inputs on a keyboard. It can be mouse clicks, it can be, uh, you know, Twitter likes. Um, so here I'm just, the example I'm giving is basically inputs on a keyboard. You've got A, B, and C. And then I'm transforming that data stream and cre creating an entirely new data stream um, where I've added an exclamation point. And I've used the map to do that. And it's important to note that these are two different event streams 
um, in keeping with the functional nature of uh, functional reactive programming. Um, it is not operating on the original stream, it's returning a new stream. Here's another example of a uh, click stream. So the top is the original uh, event stream. Again, again, the arrow is time. Um, and uh, the marbles represent clicks. Uh, and those that are close together are probably double clicks. And so what this, with a series of uh, transformations, is doing is, in this case, using a method called throttle, which kind of collects adjacent events into probably an array or something. Um, it's then taking that stream, transforming it using a uh, map that returns uh, the length of the clicks. And finally, it's returning only those um, clicks that were to and above. So it, you end up with an event stream that's basically uh, emitting only those double clicks. And you're counting three clicks as a double click. Oh, uh, so here's some an example of a version in, in kind of pseudocode in that we're just assuming that the uh, subscription um, that we already have an observable, that the stream of Trump tweets that we're getting is already an observable. And so what we're doing is that um, we're get, getting this uh, stream continuously. We're filtering it for the author Trump. And, um, and then we're, what we're doing is subscribing. And this is kind of like for each. Uh, and we are console logging the results. And again, this is happening over time. So you know, uh, it's continuous. So you might be wondering, well, why do we need this? We already have promises. And yes, we, uh, promises are a great tool. We use them for handling many asynchronous uh, operations, uh, you know, such as single API calls. Uh, they make, they reduce, you know, callback hell they're, they're, and code spaghetti and all of that. And they're, they're great. Um, however, they can, can be improved upon um, when dealing with uh, more complex uh, situations. Um, so, for instance, um, let's talk about autocomplete. Every time you're making a, um, a keystroke, it's sending an AJAX request, right, if you're using an autocomplete. With observables and uh, functional reactive programming, instead you can kind of throttle it or kind of slow down the uh, number of calls that are being made. Um, so as not to kind of overwhelm the server. Um, so you're basically playing around with this stream of events, um, and it gives you more flexibility. And there, you know, are many other be benefits. You can create these things called meta streams, which are uh, um, values that are them, uh, where a stream emits val values that are themselves streams. So. Um, okay, uh, observable, yeah, in, in terms of what the observable is, it's an object, it's an implementation of the Gang of Four observer pattern. It's basically um, uh, storing callbacks, kind of like the um, Redux store uh, does for um, all of its subscribers. The observable stores callback functions for its subscribers. OK, now this is where I introduce um, a tool that you might be interested in trying out. It's called, um, it's a piece of middleware called um, uh, React, oh, sorry, <laughs> Redux Observable. Um, so what we're currently using is something called the Thunk uh, in React Redux when we're dealing with asynchronous operations. Uh, and the Thunk is basically a function that wraps uh, an expression in order to delay its evaluation. And uh, this is, you know, an example right here where um, the tweet uh, 
um, it's kind of like an action creator that create, returns a function, and the, the middleware func middleware recognizes it as a function, and then it sends the, the, the you know, API request, and then when it's over, it's over. Um, so it, it's great if you're making that one, you know, call, but then this is the alternative with um, alternative to thunks, which are called epics, and they're not exactly equivalent in in the um, order, general order, but uh, basically what they're, they're kind of like the store in, in that they're receiving all of the actions and they're, they're receiving a stream of um, an event stream and they're outputting an event stream and that the input stream is an input stream of actions and it's an output stream of actions and what this allows you to do is um, it's useful, for instance, if you're loading a Netflix video and you want to cancel it immediately, uh, instead of you know continuing the uh, request, you're able to cancel it. And um, this is not something you, you can do with promises. Promises, once they're you know off, they're off and doing their thing. And uh, yeah, um, so this very specific piece of middleware is additionally being used by these, you know, pretty big companies. In fact, it was created by some people at Netflix. Um, it's also used in our favorite uh, desktop app, the Slack Electron app, and a couple of others. So it's got muscle behind it. It's a good thing to try out um, to kind of get a feel for functional reactive programming. Uh, it's also a good idea because observables are, have been um, proposed for inclusion in the next version of ECMAScript. So uh, you might see them uh, pretty soon anyway. And here are some resources. Thank you very much.